Hello, it's Desiree Alexander again, and in this video, I'm excited to go over some mind-blowing extensions that you can use with your new Chromebook. How do you download extensions? You go to the Google Chrome Web Store and download them. You can see how to do that in the Chrome Web Store video. Where do they live? Well, you can come to the hot dogs. You can go to more tools, extensions, and that is where you will find a list of all of your extensions and you can actually enable them or disable them. You can also delete them if you no longer want them. The other place that your extensions live in visual format is right here by your Omnibox. If you have too many, they're going to overflow right here under the hot dogs. You can also make your Omnibox a little bit smaller by coming here and moving it down and then you'll show more extensions. The list of extensions I'm going to go over with you in this video can be found at educatoralexander.com. You can go to presentations, tech tools, Google, mind-blowing Google extensions. When it comes up, you can see all of the extensions that I'm going to go through. You can actually click on each one and it will lead you to the Chrome Web Store so you can download it. Let's get started. The first four are all about Gmail. So let's mosey on along to Gmail. So I have an email pulled up. The first thing I'm going to show you is Auto Text Expander. So you come here, you're going to use this extension when you have those emails that you send over and over and over again. Such as you may send the tardy policy when a parent asks about why their child may have gotten into school suspension or something like that. This is just an example. So you may have to put the, the tardy policy in emails over and over and over again. So when you bring up Auto Text Expander, it's going to have some already here for you. So you can go ahead and delete those if you don't want them. I like to just copy and paste one of my favorite short stories, The Telltale Heart. So I'm going to say add. What you do is you use a shortcut word or numbers that you type into your email to actually expand into whatever you want it to expand to. So we're going to act like this is the tardy policy. And I'm going to use the word tardy and click save. Now, when I go back to my email, if I type the word tardy, it expands to whatever I told it to expand to. Now, a tip to this is, you know what? I may want to actually write the word tardy one time without it expanding. So a tip is to either double the first letter or what I like to do is actually put a number one behind the word that I actually want to be my shortcut. Always remember to click save. So now if I type the word tardy, it will not come up. But if I put tardy one, I know it's going to expand. The next is Bitmoji. Now, you do have to create an account for a Bitmoji. And Bitmojis are those cute little cartoons or avatars that people use pretty much everywhere. Now, you can use it in your Gmail. So once you create your Bitmoji account at bitmoji.com, you can download this and it will link to your Gmail. So if I click insert Bitmoji right here, notice it has a little icon for me. I can actually come here, click on, of course I can search and all that kind of stuff. I can click on the Bitmoji that I want to use. I can make it a little bit bigger by clicking on it and dragging. And now I have a cute Bitmoji in my email. Yay, yay, yay. The next thing I'm going to show you is called Boomerang. So with Boomerang, when you download the extension, it's going to give you this toolbar right here at the bottom of the email. With Boomerang, you can actually schedule your email to go out whenever you want it to. So I can say, you know what, send this email out tomorrow morning, or I can get very specific. You can also tell the email to Boomerang back to you, for example, come back to you in whatever day or time you want it to. Notice that it just logged me in. So if I say, hey, Boomerang, Boomerang this email back to me in one hour. 
what that does is it'll give you a reminder that hey no one has replied to this email or no one has clicked on this email how can you tell it's because right here you tell it when but right here you tell it why so you can say hey boomerang back to me if i have no reply if it's not clicked if it's not open or just regardless i need a reminder about this email the other thing that boomerang does is gives you this pause button you can actually pause your entire inbox to say you know what i just don't want to see any new emails come to this inbox it's not going to delete the emails it's just going to pause it until you want them to come in you can also do an auto responder to tell people hey guys my inbox is paused i won't see it for a while but you know i'll get to it when i can of course you can type what you want to in here and then you have some delivery exceptions and some other things that you can do with this. So that is Boomerang. The last thing I'm going to show you is Ystamp. With Ystamp, you can do these awesome email signatures. So with Ystamp, you do have to create an account. It is completely free or you can pay. So I'm going to click Edit Signature so you can see how it looks very quickly. So you can see that you can have different signatures and this also works with other email clients, not just Gmail. For example, this one is actually being used at, um, with Outlook right now. But you can create it, you can put a logo, you can come down here and put different social media, you can promote events, you can do all that in your new awesome so email signature. So that is Y stamp. Those are the four Gmail mind-blowing extensions. Now we're going to get some, to some extensions that deal more with productivity. And I am going listing them in the order that they appear on the list. The next one is called Clipboard History 2. Is there a Clipboard History 1? I am not sure, but Clipboard History 2 is awesome if you have ever copied something for example a url you come here and go yeah i want this url and you copy it and then you go to another website and you're like oh i want this one too and you copy it again and you're like oh no i forgot to paste the first one well with clipboard history too you don't have to worry about that because when you come and click this it's going to show you every single thing that you have ever copied unless you clear it out so you can see that i have copied a whole bunch of random stuff notice the telltale heart is right here the link that i just copied is right here and you can delete them you can turn this on and off or you can bring them up and do stuff with it so you never have to worry about losing anything that you copy online color pick eyedropper is a neat way to see the specific color of anything you find online so if you download color pick eyedropper you click it and you say you know what i really want the color of this yellow look how small that is you can still get the exact color so notice up there it gives you the rgb the the hls the h s l sorry and it gives you the number so this gives you the color number and if i go back and click up here it's going to give me all that information now i have other stuff that i can do with it but when i want to get off of color pick eyedropper i can come here and exit it out the next one is emoji for google chrome this allows you to use emojis anywhere on the internet Yay, you can never have enough emojis, right? Even in your Google Drive. So when you're on your Google Drive and you want to name your Google Drive, look, you can now put emojis to better find out, um, to better find your stuff as a visual clue. So what I can do is I'll open this and I'll come up here and open up my emojis. I'll do, I don't wanna do a sad face just in case this is something. I'm gonna do the cool copy. And now when I get off of here, I have my little cool emoji. I'm going to do another one. Let's go to crying out loud. I can do that. And let's just do a regular old happy face. Okay. 
So you can do your different emojis. You can also paste them like that. When you click OK, they are going to be in color, so you don't have to worry about that. So that is your emojis for Google Chrome. The next one is Ad Block. When you use ad block, it's really cool because it allows you to block ads everywhere on the internet, including, let's say, Facebook, when you have the ads on the side. You can also block different ads for YouTube. So when you get those um, YouTube commercials before the video, it's going to stop that. The next one we're going to look at is G Suite Training. What that does is if you go to any Google product, it will give you this nice little colorful bubble. And when you click on it, it's going to give you different things that it thinks you may have a question about. You can also come up here and ask a question or just put a topic. I am on Google Drive, so I'm asking it about folders. Yep, that's exactly what I'm going to know, how to create a new subfolder. Let's create a new folder to learn how to create a subfolder within it. Click on the new folder here. So you see how it's bringing me through the steps to do it. So I'm going to click here. To create a subfolder, we simply create a new folder while we are viewing the folder you want the subfolder to. Okay, so you get the point. I'm going to end the lesson. But that is what G Suite training does. Another thing that it does is if your internet is maybe a little bit slow or it just doesn't have what it needs to bring you through the steps, then it will actually show you a video on how to do whatever you're looking to do. Next, we're going to look at extensity. This one is really, really good, especially if you have a whole bunch of extensions. So when you click on extensity, it's going to show you all of the extensions that you have downloaded. The point of this is that you can very quickly disable and enable. For example, ad block sometimes will not work on certain websites. You'll pull up the website and you'll say, hey, you can't go to this website if you have ad block on. Especially those websites that get paid, they don't want you to visit the website without looking at the ads. So It'll say, no, 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 you can't look at this page with ad block on. So instead of going to your hot dogs and going to disable it, now you can use extensively to just quickly disable and enable. Notice the little ad block right here. It goes away. It comes back. So you're not deleting them or anything like that. You're just turning them off. Next is Google Dictionary by Google. So if you are on any website and you want to know what a word is, you no longer have to search for that word. So for example, if I'm on the Ed Tech Team website and I see the word discover, I can highlight the word discover, come up here to my handy dandy dictionary tool, and now it tells me everything I need to know about that word. I can also discover. hear the word. Another thing I can do is just come up here and type in a word that I may want to know the definition to. And it does the exact same thing. Awesome. Next, we're going to go to Google Translate. Now, what Google Translate does is it will translate terms, phrases, and whole websites for you. So I already pulled up Telemundo. This website is in Spanish, and I actually want it to be transferred to English. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to Google Translate and you do have a settings option where you can tell it when I click you what language to actually transfer into. So I've already told it to transfer into English. Notice I can transfer words or I can come and say translate this whole page. So now you can see that this page is now in English. Next, we're going to look at Grammarly for Chrome. What Grammarly does is it helps you with your grammar. So anywhere that you type on the internet, even your email, even Facebook, or anywhere, Twitter, wherever, Grammarly will help you catch those things that may not be correct. So if you notice in here, I have seven little things that it's telling me mm, you may want to look at. So it has a little number down here. If I click it, it's going to tell me, oh, I don't know if sanity, if that's correct, if you may want 
uh, to remove the comma, blah, blah, blah. So you can say yes or no. Like some of my ones are coming from my Y stamp. And I may say, you know what? I don't want to say join me for my next event. I want to leave it at at. So I can leave it at at. If I want to, I can just say no. Go ahead and leave that alone. But they have some other stuff. And if you hover over it, do I need another space there? Most of these are spaces. Do I want to put in LA in capital letters? Those kind of things. So it's going to tell you what it thinks and you can approve or not approve them. That is Grammarly. And some of these things do different, do much more things. But this is just a kind of quick look at them to see if you're interested. And then you can look a little bit deeper into them. The next one is print friendly and PDF. What that does is it gives you websites that have a lot of pictures and things like that. And it allows you to print them a little bit better. So I'm going to look at Ed Tech Team again. Even though it, it is picture heavy, like it has this video. So if I go up here and click on print friendly and PDF, what it's going to do is show me, okay, well, this is what we think we can do with this website. So it's keeping the pictures. It took off the video. It's putting it in a more print friendly format. So I can say, yes, please go ahead and print these off. I can do it as a, save it as a PDF or email it. I can also come here and go, you know what? I don't want that picture. Notice when I clicked on it, it took it off. I can say, you know what? I don't want that picture or this one either. So now it's more of a just clean print. I don't want that picture. I don't want that picture, even though the pictures are lovely. So you see, you can kind of pick and choose and get the content of the website, save it as a PDF or print it, and you are ready to go. The next one we're going to look at is Google Docs Quick Create. So if you're in a rush, 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 and you know you need to go ahead and create that Google Doc and you're rushing, the usual thing that you would have to do is open up your Google Drive, go to New, and go ahead and click on your Google Docs. Well, you no longer have to do that. Now with Google Docs Quick Create, you just come up here, you click New Document, a new spreadsheet, or any one of these. It opens up a brand new one. It saves it in the Google Drive account that you have logged into, and you're good to go. Start working. The next one we're going to look at is Office Editing for Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So if you have this one activated, and you have a, let's say, a Microsoft Word document in your Google Drive, what you can do now is you can open that up, let me find a Word document. You can open that up and ta-da! Now you can actually edit it using your Google Drive. You no longer have to actually do it on your desktop and then bring it back in. Notice that this is a Word document, but it's allowing me to edit it. Okay, then I will click Save Now and it's going to update that document. Now, I will tell you, of course, it will not update it on your hard drive, but it will be updated in your Google Drive account. Next is an amazing one, not just because it's by Ed Tech Team, but it's just a really, really cool extension. And it's called Checkmark by Ed Tech Team. What it does, especially for those, I'm not going to say just English teachers, but any teacher that is grading essays. What it does is, you know, when you're using Google Docs, you're constantly giving them comments, right? You, this is a run on sentence. This is, you need a comma here, that kind of thing. But now what you can do is notice when I highlight, I get that little faint, this little faint thing right here. So it's not going to kind of get in your way. But if you come to it and you hover over it, I'm going to say that this is a run on sentence. So I can just click this and ta-da! it puts the doggone comment there for you. I'm sorry, I used to be an English teaching a librarian. This is amazing. Um, so you do that, you can come right here and say, hey, check capitalization. So you no longer have to go to comments and copy and paste the same comments. You just come here, you highlight, you go up here and say, oh, you need to, something, something's wrong with this. You need to look at that. And now that student is getting your, your live feedback and you're doing it at the drop of a hat. That was checkmark by a tech team. Next is another just amazing whew, extension and that is read and write for Google Chrome. 
Now, I do want to take a second and let you know that for Reading Write for Google Chrome, you actually can get a free teacher account. So how you can do that is if you go to presentations, on my on the educator Alexander website if you go to presentations tech tools Google and you go to read and write Google Chrome there's a whole bunch of different things here for you to help you get started with reading right but all the way at the bottom you can get your free premium account for educators so definitely take advantage of that so what reading right does is a whole bunch of different stuff you don't have to be in Google or use a Google Doc or anything like that for this to work. But I'm um, just for time's sake, I just want to show you a couple of things that it does. Once you download it, it gives you this little puzzle piece. When you click it, it gives you an actual um, toolbar. So if I'm highlighting stuff or doing whatever I want to do, it can read to you. Now, this is the free version. This is not on my educator account. This is the free version. But you notice that it can read to you. This tournament goes to 11-2007. This packet has gone to the dog's theme packet, written by Delaware Bill Tressler. So notice it stops wherever you stop the highlight. You can pause it. You can stop it. You can also do other things with this. I'm not going to go too far into it. But especially when you have the full toolbar, there are so many things that you can do with reading right. But for time's sake, I'm going to make myself move on. Next is Cami. Cami is a PDF and document markup. So what that is is when you pull up a PDF and you pull in you pull it in Cami, you can actually mark up your PDF. So if you don't have um, let's say like an Adobe DC or anything like that, you can actually use this. This is free. You can use this to mark and write on your PDFs. Screencastify is your screencasting your screen video recorder and I actually have done a video just on Screencastify. So definitely look at that and you can see how to use it. Awesome Screenshot would allow you to take a screenshot. I'm going to come up here and bring some of my extensions on here. So this is Awesome Screenshot. If I click this, it's going to ask, okay, what do you want to do? So I'm going to say, you know what, go ahead and capture my desktop. So it's capturing my entire screen. I'm just going to say capture the application, just this window, if it allows me to share. So now what it did is it did a screenshot for me. But this is what makes it awesome. I can actually use stuff to circle. Now, of course, I would do it neater than that. Um, I can do arrows on it. So if you ever wonder, how do these people make these amazing you know, screenshots where they're typing on stuff and they're they're doing all this kind of thing and they're magnifying stuff. And you're like, how do they do that? Well, this is, this is one of the ways that they can do it. So when I'm done, I'm going to click done. And now I can actually download it to my computer and use this as a nice little screenshot in my instruction packet. That is awesome screenshot. Next is Google Tone. What Google Tone does is this, this little broadcast. What it does is you can actually send websites, you can send documents, whatever you have on your computer. You can send it to everyone around you that can hear your Google Tone. So, of course, you'll have Google Tone downloaded on your laptop or your Chromebook, and they'll have Google Tone downloaded on their device. And then you go and you hit Google Tone, and whoever not whoever, but whatever device can hear that little ding, 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 ding. When they can hear it, it will automatically go to their computer. They'll get a little, a little box at the bottom that says, hey, Desiree Alexander just sent something to you. Do, do you want to accept it? And you can say yes. So imagine if you're in the middle of teaching and you say, hey, oh man, I really, I forgot to put this PDF in Google Classroom for you guys. When you can go, hey guys, I'm about to Google Tone it. Hit Google Tone, done. It's on their computer. So that's how you can use Google Tone. Google Cast for Education is a amazing way that you can send your computer screen to anyone in your classroom or any of your students can send their computer screen up to 
you. So imagine if you're teaching, you can say, hey, Johnny, sing me your screen. Show us what you're doing. They can sing it to you. You can broadcast it on a projector. And now everyone is learning from Johnny. I have a video on how to use Google Cast for education. So definitely check that out. Next is share to classroom. So if you're on something and you're like, this is awesome. I really want to share this in Google Classroom. Well, now you have your share to classroom button. You just click the button. It's going to ask you, well, what class do you want to share it with? I want to share it with history third period. You click it. You say, okay, well, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to just push it to your students? Or do you want to create an assignment? Pushing it is just like your Google tone. Do you want to just kind of send it to them? Do you want to do create classroom or assignment or whatever, whatever, whatever? You can say yes, and then you can use it. So that is shared to classroom, and then your students will also need to have shared to classroom. IORAD, I'm hoping that I'm saying that right, is a tutorial builder. What it does is as you are doing the tutorial, so for example, if I'm saying, hey, click here to get here, type in your name here, as you're doing those steps, you're going to do it really slowly so IORAC can pick up the steps. So what it does is pretty cool. What it does is it will actually type out the step for you. So if I say click here, now, I don't have to speak, but if I'm just clicking right here on this, then it will say click this link and it will actually do a screenshot of the link with my mouse clicking on it. So it's a really cool way to make very quick instructional handouts. The only drawback that I have found to the free one is that if you want to use the handout online, it's fine. You can send out the link. But if you want to use the handout to print out, which, of course, we're trying to get away from doing, but it only lets you print out the first page of the handout. So I, I, I saw that as a little drawback. And the paid version, in my opinion, is a little expensive. But if you want to just use it to get the screenshots, there you go. You can do that. You can just copy and paste them. The next one is QR code generator. What that does is whatever website you're on, you can come up here to the QR code generator. It creates a QR code for you and you can copy and paste it and send it out or you can share and I'm going to close. Crafty text is pretty cool. So if you have something that you want to display to your students, I can come up here and click crafty text and I can say, you know what? I want to tell my students welcome. So I can do this and hit display. So what it does is it doesn't take you off the website that you're on, but it kind of dims it out and gives you a transparent screen and displays it. You want to get off of it, you just click it again. You can also put a website on here. For example, I'm just going to put yahoo.com. And you can say either shorten the website or you can say, so I just did the website itself. You can actually put, I wanted to put shorten, so I'm going to put yahoo again. You can shorten it with a QR code. So what it's going to do is it's shortening it using goog.gl and it's going to put a QR code. So it gave you the sh sharpener and the QR code. Pretty cool. The next one I'm going to show you deals with social media. The first one is Pablo. So if you've ever seen people that have those really nice quotes on really nice backgrounds, they can, you can use Pablo to create those. So if I kick click Pablo. You can do different sizes and things like that. You can pick different images. You can upload your own image and you can do your quote here. You can also upload images. So if you want to upload like let's say a logo or anything like that or maybe your Bitmoji and you can put your quote and you can share it and download it and you have a nice little background and your quote or whatever you want to use this for. The next two are Buffer and Hootsuite. Buffer and Hootsuite actually allow you to schedule your social media post. So if you're doing, let's say a school club has a Twitter and you just can't post as much as you really want to, well, guess what? You can wake up 20 minutes earlier in the morning and you can use either Buffer or Hootsuite and you can actually schedule five posts to go out for that week.
so you can schedule your social media post. There are two URL shorteners that uh, there's more, but these are the two that I suggest bit.ly and goo.gl. So now I'm getting to here because this is a little bit crowded. So with bit.ly, you can actually create a URL sharpener. So if you have a URL, you can put it in bit.ly and all of the URLs will start with bit.ly bit.ly slash and then you can actually customize it to say what you want that URL to be. So for example, if I did one for this class or this video, it would be bit.ly slash extensions. Now, of course, some of them will be taken and you have to go through and see which ones are not taken. But what it also does is it will save it for you all in your account. So you don't have to worry about what if I forget the, the bit.ly. That's okay. It saves it all for you. And it also counts how many people go to that site. Now, Google.gl pretty much does the same thing, but it also has a QR code attached to it where it will um, give you a QR code. The last ones I'm just going to quickly go through. These are your tab management. There are, I think, a million tab management um, extensions. Some of them do the exact same thing. Some of them don't. But these are some that you can definitely, these are ones that I recommend. These are ones that others have recommended to me. And you can actually um, use these. So tab snooze, I'm not going to go through all of them, but with tab snooze, what you can do is you can actually organize your tabs and snooze them to another time. So you can say, you know what, close all these tabs and open them back up next week. So I can click that and I can tell it to do that. Oh, I snoozed my first tab. So I can tell it to do that or I, I'm just going to say no thanks. But I can tell it to snooze. Notice that my, it actually snoozed the tab that I was using the most. But that's okay because I can come back to tab snooze. Notice it says one and I can open it back up. Snooze tabs, open my tab back up, tab snooze. So it opens my tab back up. Another one, the one that I actually use the most is the panic button, and that's the next one. The panic button, what it does is if you have tabs open, let's say you're working on your planning period, and uh-oh, the kids are coming back in. You don't want them to see all the tabs that you have open. Maybe you're, you're finding some good lessons, and you don't want them to see where you're finding the lessons from. So you can come here and click the panic button. What that will do is it will hurry up and close all of your tabs. So notice, except for my pin tab, which is just asking me, to leave um it closed all of my tabs the only reason why i kept that pinned one up was because i had that open email on it but it pang it it sent them all away and then whenever i'm ready i can come back and say whoo open them all back up so then it opens up all of my tabs that i had open so that is panic button again i'm not going to go through all of these but i just wanted to show you a couple of them you can actually look at the rest of them uh, tabs manager and tab cloud and one tab is kind of an organizing places uh, for your tabs tab scissors and tab glue will take your tabs apart put them together so just different things that you can do with your tabs to keep the video a little bit shorter than it could be, I'm going to wrap up right there and say, hopefully your mind has been blown at these amazing, mind-blowing Google extensions.